Sometimes it's the quiet, small communities that hold the deepest, darkest secrets. Is it just because they want Gross Point Farms to be this, this, uh, this safe haven of, of beauty and crime-free utopia? It's a mystery that has haunted Gross Point Farms. I firmly believe they were her finger or her footprints. And Gross Point Woods for more than a decade. What happened to the mother of three, Joanne Matuk? It remains one of the area's biggest mysteries. What happened to 55-year-old Joanne Matuk Romaine? If you're like many, you were made first aware of her story January 12, 2010. Joanne's car was discovered in her church parking lot near the water's edge. When Gross Point Farms police reported the 55-year-old mother walked out of her evening church service at St. Paul's, walked across the street, and walked into Lake St. Clair and killed herself on that cold and blustery evening. Her body would be found 70 days later, washed up in Canada. Joanne Matuk's story got the attention of the press, but didn't take center stage. Media typically doesn't report much on suicides. Police say it's suicide. Then there was word that Joanne Matuk was paranoid, depressed. The public seemed satisfied with that explanation, but her family knew that was far from the truth. And say you can describe something as paranoid or whatever, but when it's something real and you come to find out that it actually is real and you say I'm being followed and all of a sudden she's missing, yeah, you're not paranoid. Kelly Romaine, she Joanne's knew. daughter, remembers what her mother told her shortly before she died. And said, you know, if something ever happens to me, look at him. When she said that, what did you think? And that's when all the craziness really started to happen. To try and understand what was going on in Joanne's life on that frigid Tuesday evening back in 2010, you first need to know more about the 55-year-old mother. Joanne was born and raised in Gross Point Woods. Her childhood spent in this home on Anita Street. She married David Romaine in 1980. They had three children, Kelly, Michelle, and Michael. She was very strong in her faith. Um, and her family, you know, her family was her everything. Her kids were her everything. The remain children were raised in this home on Hidden Lane in Gross Point Woods, a home filled with so many memories, birthday parties, lots of family dinners, and get-togethers with friends. She was even everyone's second mom. Like, she just was the most loving, caring person you could ever come across. The Romains had a happy life in their upper-class community, but 25 years into their marriage, the couple separated, David leaving Joanne for her best friend. She was a little lady, but she was strong. Joanne moved in with her daughters. She kept herself busy with a part-time job and many trips to church. She knew where all the services were. She would regularly go to church once a week, sometimes two or three times. You know, she always knew whether there was a shorter service or a full service, or she, she, you know, she knew where she could pop in. St. Paul on the Lake in Gross Point Farms was one of the places you could regularly find Joanne, frequently stopping in for a quick prayer service. This is where she was on the evening of her disappearance, attending a 7 p.m. prayer service. According to investigative reports, at 7.20, a witness saw Joanne exit the church. A minute later, another witness at the church said she heard a car alarm go off. She looked. It was a Lexus. Joanne drove a Lexus. According to police reports, a third witness saw something strange at 7.50. A man who seemed out of place, wearing a lightweight coat and scarf, running strangely along the lakeside of Lakeshore Drive. Police would later find that scarf here on Lakeshore Drive. According to police records, put it into evidence and then later donate it to charity. Just one of the questionable police practices you'll see as we go through this mystery. Meantime, Kelly and Michelle Romaine got home about 9 o'clock after eating dinner out. They wondered why their mother wasn't home yet. It's like a calling her. We're like, okay. She's not answering. Maybe their mom turned off the phone in church, they thought. But worry started to grow. That's strange. She would have called us if she went somewhere with her friends. And I saw lights come around the corner. I was like, oh, it must be mom. And I look out the window and it's a cop car. The cop pulled up our house at 9.24 p.m. How do you know it's 9.24? Because you instantly looked at my phone to see. So I walk outside and I walk up to the cop car and I say, can I help you? 
And he said, um, we found your mom's car abandoned in the church parking lot. Is she missing? And then I thought to myself, how would he know she's driving that car? It's registered to me. So if you ran a license plate, you'd be looking for me, not my mom. So right away, I know something's off. Something's wrong. Then the daughters wondered, why would police consider their mom missing after just a couple of hours of her car sitting in a church parking lot? No police department in any city in all over the world is going to, after two hours, come to your house after a car is parked somewhere and ask if somebody is missing that was driving that vehicle. It's just not going to happen. 